Welcome to the Continuum Lab. In the previous video, I made this instrument here, which I call the virus pad. Now, I'm super happy with how this turned out, especially considering that these sensors on here are very much homemade out of stuff that I basically had lying around the lab anyway. So uh, to keep that trend going and to try to keep myself from going stir crazy uh, during this quarantine, in this video, I'm going to investigate some more materials for DIY sensors. And with that in mind, I found something very interesting. You see, back in 2007 or 8, when I first started making videos, the very first video camera that I got was this guy here, the HV30. This is a great camera. It's a lot of fun to shoot with. It does amazing macro and it shoots on mini DV tapes. So although I don't have the camera anymore, I still have a box of tapes. And I do mean a whole box. So what's so interesting about mini DV tapes anyway? Well, it turns out that the strip of tape inside the box shares a characteristic with the Velostat material that we use to make these sensors work. And that is that this is a resistive material. And that basically means that depending on how you pass electricity to it and how you manipulate it, you can get a variable resistance from it. And that's what we're going to use to make our sensor. Let's do it. So the first thing that I need to do is establish exactly what it means that this material here is resistive. So if you remember last time for this instrument, we used some of this Velostat material here from an electrostatic bag. And uh, the way this works is you can apply an electrode to each side and then with pressure, the resistance between the two electrodes drops and you can then measure that. So normally the easiest way to measure the resistance of any material is with a multimeter. But um, mine is unfortunately broken right now and of course I can't really go get a new one. So uh, instead I'm simply going to use exactly what I'm using in this instrument, a voltage divider circuit and a microcontroller. So uh, this won't give me an absolute value for resistance or voltage or anything, but it will give me exactly what I need to know to be able to use this material with this microcontroller. So this really is a very simple setup. I need two sets of cables. This triple cable here, which connects the voltage divider to the microcontroller. And I have this double set of uh, alligator clip cables here, which connect from the microcontroller and to our resistive material. So now I just need to plug this into the computer. Okay, so here we are in Arduino and uh, here I have a super simple sketch that just reads the uh, analog pin and then prints the result to serial. So let's uh, try and upload that. Cool, let's open up the serial monitor. Okay, we're getting a very low reading, which is uh, probably fine. So now we need to start measuring this stuff here. <clears throat> so first of all, let me just try and touch this to the, uh, to the tape. Okay. Getting a reading of around 800. That's something. So let's try half that distance. Now I'm up almost at 900. That's great. So we're getting a higher voltage. That means a lower resistance. 900 and something. Let's try it back here. 800 or so. Let's try longer. 720. So 690. So in about 10 centimeters, we're getting between two and 300 points of resolution. That is very, very awesome. Okay, so given that this uh, material has resistive properties lengthwise, I think what we really want to make with this uh, will be some kind of slider, like a positional slider where you can put your finger down or even glide it up and down and get a clean analog signal from it. It seems like that should be possible. So I can also see that the tape here is not the same color on both sides. It seems like one side has a metallic sheen to it and the other is a little bit more dull and plastic-like. So let's try the other side, which is a dull one. I'm pretty sure that's not going to work. Okay, the other side lets a little tiny bit of voltage through, but it gives much, much lower readings. 
mean, that's kind of interesting in itself. So definitely the highest resolution we're getting on the metallicized side of this. Man, that is very interesting. Let's try a really long strip. Something just happened. I'm getting zero connection now. Did I break a cable or something? What's going on? Okay, we're back. Okay. Okay, so I just found something out. Look at this spot here where the, where the tape is all scrunched up and sort of uh, broken. That's where it was caught in the mechanism here. That does not let any current through. While this little stretch here, which is still clean and not scruffy looking, does. So it's a bit of a fragile material. This is not necessarily something that you want in your sensors. But of course, if we're going to make a positional slider out of this, then we're going to need to stabilize it anyway. It's really, really soft and flimsy. So probably going to stick it onto some plastic. We're going to use some different kinds of tape and uh, try to stabilize it as much as possible. Also, I'm probably not going to be using the alligator clips to uh, connect to it. Instead, I think I'll be using some of this copper tape here as an electrode. So, okay, let me get some materials together. Give me a second. Okay. Here's some stuff. So uh, this is a minimalist setup, but I think this should work. What I have here is two different kinds of plastic. I have some very, very thin sheets, and then I have some uh, slightly thicker sheets. This is 0 0.5 millimeters, quite flexible. Then I have some double-sided tape. This is essential. And then of course I have the copper tape, which I'm going to use to make my electrodes. So the idea is that I will uh, lay down two side pieces like these guys here and then in between those two there will be a strip of this tape here. So this of course is going to be more stable because it will all be taped down to the surface with double sided tape. The mini DV tape will be connected at one end to the voltage divider and then on top of it we will have a long copper electrode running the full length of it and that will be stuck to the underside of a piece of this plastic here which is then Again, double-sided double taped down to the top surface here. So the idea with using this specific plastic here is that with moderate pressure, it should flex enough to uh, connect the uh, copper electrode to the mini DV tape, making a full circuit and uh, running current through to the voltage divider on the other terminal. So let's try to set that up real quick. And instead of this box here, I'm going to use two pieces of this plastic, one for the top, one for the bottom. So this should be quick, let's do it. So the first thing is to put some double-sided tape on this. I'm leaving a little gap at one end. So now let's get a fresh strip of uh, tape here. There. So we want to get the metallicized part upwards. I'm just going to put this down in the middle, making sure that I have plenty of material sticking out over each end. There. Next up, we'll put down the side rails here. Make sure you don't leave any double-sided tape uncovered. Just like that. The other one. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but now we have two strips of very thin plastic covering the double-sided tape next to uh, the mini DV tape. So now we can put double-sided tape on the other piece here. Cut off a nice piece. Nice. <clears throat> now let's make a copper electrode. Let's see. So now we have these two pieces of plastic here with a strip of material on each. And uh, one end of each strip of material runs off of the end of the plastic and that's fine. We want them to run off of opposite sides. And now all that's really left to do here before we connect it is to sandwich this so that I make sure that uh, none of the mini DV tape touches the double-sided tape back here. So the easiest way to do that is to lift it up with the transparent plastic you can actually see through it. 
And uh, so what are we trying to do here? Something like that. That feels pretty solid. And then um, I want to be able to clip my alligator clips onto here. So I'll just fold the copper tape down to one side like that. And then I'll get just a little piece of double-sided tape. And then we can stick the mini DV tape down on top of that. There. That's what it looks like. Now we can clamp one alligator clip on here and the other on here. So let's try that. Let's see if this works. So if everything works, then we shouldn't be getting any signal just from plugging this in. We actually need to compress the sensor with the finger first. So that's not so good. Seems to me that we have some kind of short somewhere in the circuit here. Okay, so it's pretty terrible. I mean, I can see that the resistive material is working, but uh, I'm afraid my sensor construction is just really bad. I am able to get readings off of this, higher readings at this end and lower readings at that end. And that makes sense because we're getting closer and closer to where the mini DV tape is being read. And so the uh, readings should be higher and higher. So we get all the way up to 830, 50 or something like that. And down here we're getting 690. I'm losing light, so I'm gonna call it a day and I'm gonna go think about this a little bit, think of a better design and then try to uh, make that tomorrow morning. Of course, in the video, I'll just make a little edit and be right back with you. And I'm back. So I've decided that rather than build a whole new uh, sensor setup, I'm going to try to uh, fix this. So I think the main problem here is that the separating plastic sheets in here in the middle are too thin and so they allow the copper and the mini DV tape to touch. So I'm going to try to peel this open if I can without breaking anything and swap those out for some thicker sheets. Mm. Okay, that didn't really work out so well, although this side appears to be intact. So I'll just try to reconstruct this side here. So now for the spacer material, I'm going to use some of the same plastic that I use for the rest of it, which is a little bit thicker. That's the other one. And then final assembly. And then again. And now we're ready to plug into the computer again. So we're back in Arduino. And uh, we should already be reading the uh, microcontroller. Okay, that's looking much better. Now we're getting a zero reading. And I'm able to activate the sensor. And when I let go, it goes straight back to zero. Okay, so the problem with the other sensor setup was a purely mechanical setup and it's fixed now. Thicker spacer material so that we don't have any shorts between the mini DV tape and the copper tape. Awesome, so let's see. The logic of this sensor says that this should be the lower reading and that should be the higher reading. That's a little bit erratic. 390, 400, okay. And then down here, I'm really not getting a good reading. That's just weird. I think I might have sort of messed up the, the mini DV tape here. It is pretty fragile. Yeah, and I'm getting much lower readings, which probably correspond to a worse connection here. Yeah, that's almost certainly the problem. Okay, this is not really convincing me at all. I think it might be time for a little conceptual reboot. Okay, so what I'm trying to do now is I'm going to uh, connect the mini DV tape without using the uh, alligator clips because I think I'm just damaging it that way. So instead I'm going to make the circuit with a piece of copper up against the tape material and then I can clip to the copper. Uh, <clears throat> okay, that's kind of crummy, but let's just test it and see. Okay, so we're back in Arduino, reading the sensor. So let's see what we get. This should be the low end. Low 600s. We have the middle section. 
around 800 and up here we are up at 900 and something so uh, that is definitely working okay i'm just going to play around with this for a while and see if uh, i can break it so one problem that i am finding here is that using these materials and this thickness of spacer and whatnot i am having to apply quite a lot of force to make this work but it does work so that was interesting for a while there i actually thought that i wouldn't be able to make it work but as it turns out it really is possible to make a positional slider out of some mini dv tape and various bits and pieces uh, not easy but definitely possible so of course there's uh, infinitely many ways that i could have put together this sensor and this is not necessarily the most refined design so in the next video i will keep developing this type of slider sensor by incorporating it into an actual instrument and rather than make a new instrument from scratch i've decided that i'm going to expand the virus pad this instrument here which i made in the previous video and for that purpose i already picked out a couple of storage boxes just like the ones i used here so that's going to happen in the next video right here on the continuum lab youtube channel so if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of that then you should definitely subscribe and turn on notifications and all that good stuff and that's all for today take care until next time and i'll see you in the continuum